So as promised, here's a preliminary playthrough of Open Rails. Actually, I want to do the first video about a bunch of problems I found with it. I almost didn't do the playthrough because of these problems. Essentially, my computer overheating to the point where the circuit breakers popped and the computer shut off. Here I'm finding the correct page in the website. Incidentally, that picture there is supposed to be in Hungary, which is an interesting fact. I would like to play that route at some point. Here we are. Version 1.2 is actually not the version I have. I wanted to look up to see if there were any improvements in it that would actually make my computer stop shutting down. But as you can see, most of the improvements in version 1.2 are actually extending the capabilities of the simulator, which could actually be a bad thing. Because if the existing version that I'm using, 1.1.1, is overheating my computer, if you add other features to a program like that, it's likely to get even worse, of course. It just kind of goes without saying. But it all looks kind of interesting. The AWS for the British Roots doesn't work yet. We'll see what they do about that. Although the track monitor with the F4 key, that can be a good substitute for cab signals, actually. Not realistic, but usable. Anyway, so here's more information, list of files. You actually have to download the demo route and the other routes you're going to run separately unless you already have Microsoft Train Simulator and can use the original data files, which I've done actually. I've done tests with that, and you'll see that at the end of this. Although, actually, not strictly speaking the original files, but the castle, the folder route from my Microsoft Train Simulator playthrough. So here they have this long list of improvements or planned improvements. This is all good to know that they're addressing this. However, I don't see any mention of the system requirements here. It took me a while to find them, actually. And when I finally did, I was not really... Oh, there's... Incidentally, that's another wonderful screenshot from the Keystone Corridor. You know, that's the Horseshoe Curve, obviously. But I don't know which add-on that is. So anyway, they give you these requirements, which are vastly higher than the original train simulator. The original train simulator only required a 266 megahertz processor and 64 meg of RAM. This requires 500, I assume 512 megabytes of RAM plus a 2 gigahertz processor, which is extreme. But I actually have much better specs than that. So anyway, I downloaded this app, RealTemp, from techpowerup.com. This is one of many, many thermometer apps you can get to monitor your processor. Because I wanted to know scientifically what exactly I was doing to my computer, whether in fact it was overheating because of the processor. And another thing I discovered was Toshiba laptops run hotter when the battery is either bad or old, as well as if you remove it entirely. So here, I first tried with the battery in. It didn't work at all. Then I pulled the battery out, and I got the results you're about to see. I'm using Game Booster, as you just saw, an iobits speed boosting capability in Advanced System Care to make the computer a little bit faster, a little bit leaner. And as you'll see, it still isn't going to work. I'm going to end up loading up open rails only to see my processor start to heat up 
unsustainably. It'll just continuously go up in temperature, even though I'm running an old Microsoft Train Simulator route, and not even the new demo route, which is much more modern and therefore much more demanding. So there's the demo route, and in the end I didn't use this because it caused the computer to shut off before I even got very far. So I'm going to my train simulator installation there, and you can see you can specify which folder you're going to use for content. So we're going to run castle folder, just like in the Microsoft train simulator playthrough. Exactly the same scenario. So we start and watch the temperature shoot up. I'm going to move the window over. See that? It's already at 80 Celsius, and it's not even fully loaded. So there's the splash screen. And that's just going to keep climbing. And I'm going to have to shut the whole thing down to prevent it overheating my computer. But I'm going to give it a little bit of time to actually screw up so you can see. But this, it isn't so unusual to have your processor running at 80 Celsius, but once you get over 90, you're pressing your luck. And as you'll see, it just continues to climb as I get the train ready here. There's a track monitor, redesigned for open rails. There's the next station window, again, redesigned for open rails. But the rest of the graphics are pretty original, as you can see. They look quite nice, in my opinion. So I am not condemning this project. I really like it, but it seems as if it's putting too many demands on the system relative to the system requirements. And one theory I have is that it's unloading the work on the CPU instead of the GPU. Because as you saw earlier, it's supposed to use your graphics card and DirectX as well, but the problem is it just puts all the load on the processor, so I have to shut it down here. So I will show you what I did in the next video. But first I'm going to look at this a little bit more. See, the processor is cooling down almost as soon as I shut down open rails. It still doesn't get below 70 Celsius because it got so hot it just can't cool down adequately. But the lack of the battery there, see I'm pointing to the empty battery bay. That apparently is one of the quirks of a Toshiba satellite laptop, at least an older one, that you have to be aware of. 